couple of weeks ago, I got a suggestion for a video from a commenter named Shadow Giraffe 7502 that at first seemed pretty simple. What Pokemon would be the best to have in real life? And at first, I'll admit I didn't think much of it. I mean, it sounds like a fun idea, but it really sounds more like a matter of opinion, not something that I could like try and prove in a video. But as that idea percolated in my head, I started to think of all the ways that a Pokemon could be useful in real life. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that your opinion is wrong. There is one single Pokemon that would be categorically, objectively, undisputedly the most useful to have in real life. And I can prove it with science. Richard, hit that intro. I feel like when asked this question, most people will fall into one of two camps. Some people will immediately jump to something like, Ooh, I want Giratina, Lord of the Distortion World. And I mean, that's all well and good. I mean, it's a little concerning and it probably means that you're 12, but I encourage you to think about that choice for literally five seconds. Just take five seconds to consider what you're saying. What are you going to do with a Giratina? Seriously, what are you going to do? It's a 20-foot dragon comprised of pure antimatter. I mean, unless you're planning on toppling all the world's governments and becoming a global dictator who sends any who opposes them straight to the distortion world. I mean, this thing ain't doing anything for you. And if that is your plan... See, the premise of this video isn't what Pokemon would you choose if you were a Pokemon trainer in the world of Pokemon. No, no, no. You and only you get one Pokemon that you can take from the world of Pokemon into the real world. There's no other trainers to battle. There's no league to challenge. It's just you. So, having a Pokemon that's super powerful with all sorts of strong attacks, that ain't gonna help you that much. You gotta think bigger, my friends. Also, I think it's worth noting that just because you choose a Pokemon, that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll also choose you. What, you think that Arceus is gonna sit around and bring you potato chips on the couch whenever you ask for it? Nana! -na. Also, I'm not picking any Pokemon that has anything to do with time travel because that has literally never gone well. On the flip side though, there are people who don't want any sort of crazy power. They just want a cute pet to snuggle with. And you know what? That's admirable. After all, is there any greater treasure in this world than friendship? Yes. What? You think that Pikachu is gonna be useful? You think that Pikachu is gonna change your life? You think that Pikachu is gonna make all your problems go away? Ha 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 ha! No! We've been given a golden opportunity here. Pokemon are creatures of otherworldly power. They can control the weather. They can conquer time. They hold dominion over life and death. And you're gonna choose a pet? You fool! So I say, screw all that nonsense. We are looking for a Pokemon that is more than just a pet, but also won't get you arrested for war crimes. A single Pokemon that, if added to your life, could solve every single one of your problems. Not a fat yellow rat. Now, according to recent studies, the one thing in most people's lives that causes them the most stress is their morning commute. And now look, I get it. If you are capable of sitting in traffic at eight o'clock in the morning without wanting to get out and throw hands with literally every other person on the road, I mean, then you should probably go to the doctor because there is something not right about you. Surveys show that people are willing to give up half their salaries, their whole jobs, even their firstborn child, just so they don't have to deal with their commute. But imagine with the addition of just one magical gremlin in your life, and all of this goes away. 
My first thought was a Pokemon with Teleport, which could instantly transport you anywhere in the world. Sounds amazing, but unfortunately, if you look at the games, Teleport isn't nearly this good. Instead, you can only teleport to the last place you've been, or sometimes the place that you already are, like if you're in a Pokemon battle. How is that helpful? Hey, hey give me all your money right now. Abra, use teleport! <laughs> oh, so, sure, teleport could deal with the morning commute thing. You'd have to, I guess, drive to work like regular one morning, and then you could teleport back home, and then teleport back to work, and just keep doing that. But that is the only place you could go. You'd have to drive everywhere else. So if you, say, poured yourself a bowl of cereal in the morning and then realized that you were out of milk, you can't just pop over to the grocery store to get some. You just gotta sit on the floor and cry. The only other moves in Pokemon that allow you to travel somewhere else in the overworld are Dig, which I'm pretty sure would kill you, or fly. Now, fly might not be as fast as teleport, but it can take you wherever you want. And let's be honest, it would be so cool to flip all those idiots and traffic the bird while riding on a bird. So the first criteria for choosing our real life Pokemon, it's gotta have access to the move fly. I also considered adding in some stipulation like it has to be able to reasonably carry the weight of a person, uh, but hey, if the game say that a pigeon can carry me across the entire country, then that's good enough for me. So now that we can fly, we can fully eliminate that dreaded commute. But you know what another way to not have to commute to your job is? Just don't have a job. There are tons of ways you could monetize having a pet Pokemon. If you had a Machamp, you could start like a moving company or something. Maybe you had a Blastoise, you could open up like, like a water park. I mean, you're probably gonna get famous on Instagram no matter what you choose. But when I think monetizing Pokemon, I think of one move. Payday. Or I guess make it rain, but if I only get one Pokemon to choose in real life, I ain't wasting out one of those car dealership dudes. Payday used to be the signature move of the Meowth line, which obviously can't learn fly, but luckily in Gen 8, they made it a TM, allowing a much wider range of Pokemon to be able to learn it. Now, I hear you. Surely the move Payday alone isn't enough to fully sustain you, right? Well, well, don't you worry, my dear viewer. You need not ask your questions because I did the math. Payday scatters money equal to five times your level. Assuming that your Pokemon is level 100 and the currency in Pokemon is roughly equal to one yen, which we can verify by comparing the cost of a freshwater with a real life bottle of water, then every time you use Payday, you get $3.53. Payday has a maximum PP of 32, which means you can make $112.84 before you run out of PP. Do that every day, 365 days a year, and you're making $41,186.60 a year. Pretty good considering you never have to buy gas or own a car ever again, but we can do better. Now, in the world of Pokemon, the only way to restore PP without going to the hospital is with items like elixirs, which we obviously don't have in the real world, or with a Lepa Berry. Now, fun fact if you didn't know, all of the berries in Pokemon are actually based on real life berries and fruits. It's mostly fruits, to be honest. So, like, a Pecha Berry is a peach, a Cherry Berry is the cherry, and the lepa berry is supposed to be an apple. So if we assume that one apple can restore 10 PP, just like a lepa berry, then you would need to feed your Pokemon 3.2 apples every time you wanted to fully restore its PP. An apple costs an average of $1.31, meaning it would cost $4.19 every time you needed to restore that PP. Since we're making $112.84 every time that our Pokemon runs out of PP, that means that we're making a profit, baby. Just buy a bunch of apples, spam payday, feed your Pokemon the apples to restore its PP, repeat, and you have infinite money. Think your cute little Pikachu pet could do that? 
At this point, I have unlimited money. I can travel literally anywhere I want in the world. I dare say my life is pretty perfect. Oh, oh, jeez, I just stubbed my toe. Oh, God, oh, God. Ow! Oh, Richard. Oh, what did I tell you about leaving your Razor scooters around? Oh, my God. Oh! Oh, why is there a pile of Legos down here? Sure, infinite money is all well and good, but let me tell you, one trip to the hospital and that pile is going to dry up real fast. And if you're thinking with infinite money, a trip to the hospital couldn't possibly make a dent, no matter how expensive, <laughs> you obviously don't live in the US. Luckily, our Pokemon is here to save the day. Just slap a move like Heal Pulse or Wish on there and baby, you're good to go. Heal Pulse restores half of the target's maximum HP. So even if you are literally on the brink of death, just bust out two of these bad boys and you're as healthy as could be, literally. Wish does the same thing, but it happens to yourself two turns later. So like in game, if you used Wish and then swapped out that Pokemon for someone else who was low on health, it would heal that other Pokemon. So I guess like in real life, your Pokemon would have to use Wish and then you would just stand where they were standing and you're good to go. Wish is also good because it can work on your Pokemon, not just on you since, you know, potions aren't a thing. So that's three of our four possible moves filled, and already we have unlimited money, unlimited transportation, and unlimited health. Now, the only thing you need to worry about is someone finding out about your vast amounts of money and breaking into your home to do harm to your body. In order to deal with this, I, I'm sorry, I am going to have to go back on something I said earlier. We do need to commit a few war crimes. While having the power of the Lord of the Distortion World at your beck and call might be a little overkill, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for your Pokemon to have some way of protecting both of you. Now, we don't want to torch someone with flamethrower or anything, but some way to incapacitate or stun someone, maybe like put them to sleep or shock them a bit while you get away, that might be good. Am I getting away? And with that, we have our four moves selected. We need a Pokemon that can learn the moves Fly, Payday, Wish, and some sort of self-defense move, something like Sleep Powder, Thundershock, heck, even Tackle. That one's pretty flexible. So let's consult the list of the Pokemon who can learn those first three moves to see what we're working with. After running the numbers and consulting the internet, we have a choice between the following Pokemon. Nothing. Nothing? Okay, okay. So, uh, unfortunately, there is no Pokemon that can learn all three of those moves, aside from Mew, I guess. But, but again, Mew's got better things to do than help you with tax evasion. In fact, there is no Pokemon that can learn both Fly and Payday, let alone Wish. So, as much as I hate to admit it, it looks like we're going to have to make... Well, well we're going to have to make some... Some cop... Oh, oh, we're gonna have to make some comp. Oh, oh God. Oh, I gagged too hard. Oh, oh, I'm gonna throw up. Oh, oh, f oh. compromises. Oh, I mean, like, I guess infinite money and infinite health wouldn't be that bad. You could just like uh, pay for a private jet wherever you go or something. Uh, maybe like flying plus healing would be pretty good. You're probably gonna make a crap ton of money just by like making TikToks of your real life Pikachu anyway, or unless unless <laughs> unless I'm afraid I must apologize. It seems that I have unwittingly lied to you, dear viewer. There is one Pokemon that can fulfill my criteria. One Pokemon that can single-handedly turn you from a poor 20-something into a king, a trillionaire, a god among men. Pikachu. Pikachu can learn Payday via a TM, it can get Wish via Breeding, Thundershock for warding off attackers, and thanks to some special events across the years, we know that if you simply tie a bundle of balloons to your Pikachu's back, it can legally learn the move Fly. 
We also know that Pikachu is incredibly loyal. It's small enough to live in your house, and it's super cute to boot. In a twist of irony, it seems that your opinion was right after all. Unless you're one of the people that said Kyogre, in which case you were very wrong. So there you have it. Cliche as it may sound, the numbers don't lie. The most useful Pokemon to have in real life is Pikachu. Now if you excuse me, I have some work to not do. Bon voyage!